Hey, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. This is episode nine of our Tremec install, but it's also a good educational tool for installing a new clutch. So that's what we're doing today. We're putting the uh, clutch in. It also finishes off our Pontiac engine build because the engine's back in the car. We can put the flywheel on and the clutch. It's not that complicated, uh, but it's good for reference if you've never done it before. And that's what we're gonna do today. So subscribe if you haven't already so you can follow along this whole process. Uh, the next steps are gonna be uh, interesting too because we're putting a Tremec transmission in. And if you've never done that before, which includes me, then you'll learn something because I'm gonna learn something, no doubt. Let's get going on what you're gonna need. So you're gonna need your pilot bearing because we're gonna pull the pilot, old pilot bearing today. Uh, your flywheel, your clutch, disc, and your pressure plate. Don't ask me about automatic transmissions because I have no idea how to how to what how a torque converter works. So let's not go there. <laughs> so that said, let's get started on test fitting the bearing before we pull the old one. All right, guys. First things first. You need to get a new pilot bearing. If, you're, if you haven't changed your clutch in over 15 years, you probably have a pilot bushing, which is just a bronze bushing, um, but you need to upgrade to a, a, a bearing. So it's got balls in it, it's already greased, but the important thing is you want to make sure it fits on your transmission. Oh, look at that. Nice slip fit. That's exactly what you want to see. It actually goes this way. Not a big deal. We want to verify that because you don't want to get to the point where you're trying to put your transmission in and it's not fitting. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> so that's the first step to make sure it fits on your transmission that you already pulled out. All right, guys. So here's your pilot bearing, obviously. Um, I have never pulled one out before, actually, because when I put this one in, I pulled a bushing out and the bushing was relatively easy to take out. I think I just used like a, a hooked um, pry and I could, tried it on this, it didn't work. So I had to buy a special tool and the tools come in a variety of shapes and sizes. They basically look like this. And assuming this one works, <laughs> I'll put it in the uh, comment section, the part number. I got it from Summit Racing. And But there's other methods. There's one that you can put a similar end in and use a um, slide hammer. I've heard those work really well. They're just more on the expensive side and I don't own a slide hammer that I can change the tips on. So I'm gonna try this one out. So basically what it does is it goes in, it separates, and then it catches the inner race of the bearing and pulls it out by turning our nut. So I'm gonna change camera angle so you can see it in action and we'll go from there. There we go. Okay, good, good engagement. So I'm going to start tightening the nut. Almost there, almost there. Yeah. All right. Something worked according to plan. I love it. All right, guys, so there's the bore, and you can see there's a definite step right here. And that is the edge you're going to be pushing the bearing against. So as soon as when you're installing the bearing, you're going to feel that definite hard stop. I'm going to go ahead and clean out that inside with uh, WD-40, actually, instead of brake cleaner. Just clean out the gunk. It's actually the bearing grease residue from the old bearing. And that WD-40 will also help as a sliding agent for when we push the new bearing in. There's a tool you can buy to push the new bearing in, but I like to use a socket. So this sock, this is a, one of my air 
air socket that fits just in there. It's about a sixteenth of an inch clearance, and you get really good seating against the bearing. And you want to? I'm going to use this flat side, and here we go. Do the best you can to make sure it's level. And you can definitely feel if you have a high side or not. So this is nice and level. And I'm going to start lightly tapping it with my uh, rubber mallet. And then periodically check that you're still, you're still square. You don't want to be putting it in at an angle because it'll just destroy the bearing. There we go. I definitely felt it um, hit something, so I know we're all the way in. And you could almost, if you have a small, small enough finger, sorry you guys that have fingers that are too big, you can actually feel in there. There we go. All right team, flywheel time. And what I like to do is put my blue thread locker in the hole. That way you don't really have to worry about getting them on the bolts and you get your fingers all messy with the bolt and the, and the Loctite. So what you have to do now is that not all the holes are symmetric, so you have to turn it and can you guys see the holes? You can, if you can see the holes, you just keep turning it until all the holes match. Right there. Here we go. So I can put one bolt in so it doesn't fall on my head. So that would be a terrible day. So I'll go ahead and put all the fasteners in and you torque it down to 95 foot pounds. Sit back and relax. So if your engine starts to rotate while you're torquing it, get a friend to hold the front or, like me, I put a breaker bar on the crank bolt, the front uh, crank bolt, and it'll hold the engine while you torque it, like that. All right, flywheel's on. All right, team, time to put our clutch disc on, but before we do so, we need to make sure we clean the surface. It's just like working on brakes. So take some brake cleaner. Try not to spray your paint or your paint's going to come off. <laughs> so you don't want to take any fingerprints off, any oil. And see the residue? So keep doing it till you have no residue. There's a brand new dual friction clutch disc they call it. And there's even stickers, dummy stickers on it. Flywheel side. So you can take the stickers off. And you have to get one of these tools. It's a clutch installation tool. Some kits come with it, some don't. I had to buy mine separately, but it slips right through, just like your transmission input shaft. And speaking of which, you should test this on your transmission before you install it. Because same reason for the bearing, you don't want to try and, if this doesn't fit your transmission, good luck getting the transmission in. So that's my guidance. So it goes this way. And we stick it in the pilot bearing. Just like that. So that keeps it centered while we put our pressure plate on. Seeing how mine wants to fall out, i got to do it two-handed, but make sure you clean the same surface on your pressure plate. Another thing to do while you're here is give it a little spin while you're flush with the flywheel. 
because what I've had happen before is these bolts were too tall. The, short, the heads of the bolts were too big, so it would hit the springs. And I didn't realize that until I got everything together and I heard a nasty clacking sound. So make sure you test that as well. All right, there we go. So as you guys can tell, this is my old pressure plate. It only, excuse me, sorry. It only has a thousand miles on it. Um, so Center Force, if you'd like to donate a, a, a dual clutch for me, I'll be more than happy to film the installation procedure. <laughs> okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and put all the bolts in and you torque these down to 25 foot pounds and at the same time, you want to make sure you, this stays centered as much as possible. Okay, guys, now that you're all torqued down, you want to make sure you can move your insulation tool up, down, everywhere. Because if it's biased towards one side, that means your clutch disc is not centered. And it will make your insulation and transmission that much harder. So I can easily take it in. No binding, so we're good. We're centered. And... Here we go, next step, let's put our bell housing on. All right guys, before we put the bell housings in, I wanna show you something, this is my new bell housing. I have these cool dowel pins. Uh, you guys have to see my um, uh, dowel pin alignment instructions for Tremec, that's what you need. Um, but here, you wanna inspect your clutch fork, if you have a manual clutch. You cut spring loaded. Actually, it just pulls off. You take the fork and you pull it that way, and it comes off. And you want to check for wear. You want to make sure it's per it's nice and round. And this one is not. So replace that. It just unscrews right here on Allen head. So replace that before we put your bell housing on. So we're going to go ahead and put that one on because it's nice and clean, and I have. All my bolts are not stripped. I have some of my bolt holes are stripped on the old one. Um, and I like the nice clean look. So we'll move forward with that one. All right, guys, time to put the bell housing on. And if you have not been following along, I have these offset dowel pins that we needed to use for a Tremec install. If you're just putting your Muncie back in, you don't need these. But go ahead and review that, that installation procedure and measurement technique. And what I did was this faster in the back actually expands it into the dowel hole because naturally your dowel pins are going to be in your block. So I just loosened this up and it came off with the with the uh, the bell housing. Pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back on. Um, same procedure as normal. You're going to have to probably um, use a rubber mallet. And then when you we put our fasteners in, we put them in at 40 foot pounds and you lubricate the threads with some engine oil and it's that easy be right back we're in now i just have to torque all the fasteners down and by the way if you have a new bell housing your clearance on your holes might not be big enough to put a socket on so i'm actually using a socket head cap screw on the one on the lower left over here hey that was easy clutches in bell housings in the next step is putting the tremec in and i can't wait we're getting there we're getting so close so if you haven't subscribed do so so you can follow along and man i hope that the next install of the transmission is the last time i have to do it well up until the point center force uh, donates a, a dual clutch and then we'll take it out again, for sure. <laughs> anyway, you guys know the drill. Build them fast, drive them faster. See ya. Ah!